and Joe here. Hello. Welcome to the House Academy Show, entertaining real estate investment talk. I'm Stephen Jack Butella. And I'm Jill DeWitt, broadcasting from sunny Southern California. Today, Jill and I talk about five ways to finance deals. Comes up all the time. This is directly, this topic is directly derived from an article I read about a kid who's 21 years old and has a successfully accomplished uh, class A apartment building syndications. And um, usually I don't bite on the, you know, we get a million emails in this industry about XYZ tells you how to become rich, you know? And this one uh, sung to me because he's it, he said, you know, this is how you, it's very, he made it very, very clear that his job in life is to raise capital. It's not about the apartment buildings, it's not about the real estate, it's about finding a good de deal and, and raising capital. So. I decided to talk about capital. I, um, I'm good with that. <laughs> this is kind of a, a Stephen show. So before we get into it, though, let's take a question posted by one of our members on the HouseAcademy.com online community. It's free. Charlie wrote, I've come to realize that I need to make some moves to start taking myself out of the day-to-day -day operations of my business, taking myself some time back and be able to lead my business where I actually want it to go instead of just reacting to things that happen and calling that a business. <laughs> you call that a business? God, I if I had a nickel for any, every time. I love it. That's great. So I've already started using some virtual assistants for most everything that I can, not because it's faster, but because of my volume, uh, even though it's not faster, but it's scalable. So I've partnered on a couple of deals, so now I see the value of using someone else's money to fund my inventory. There you go. My next step is, I think, to get a transaction coordinator. Oh boy. But I want y'all's opinion so that I'm not just making that decision because I have more inventory than anything else at the moment. Also, if I do decide to hire a transaction coordinator, my current numbers don't really support taking on a full-time employee. Has anybody had any luck using a virtual assistant or some other part-time, like commission-only person successfully in this role. And finally, I don't know about these VAs. I didn't know I didn't know VAs were a thing until I dug around this forum. So what else am I missing? Like, what are the resources is everyone out there uh, is everybody using that's not included uh, in our membership that I should be using? Thanks, Charlie. Someday. What was the question? Should I hire a? How do oh, I that was a, how do I find him? Okay. Some days. <laughs> Long after this is all done, Jill and I are sitting somewhere in deep into retirement, if that's even possible for us. Someone's going to interview me and say, what was the hardest part of this? And I'm going to say, finding a transaction coordinator without batting Without it being me. <laughs> without even thinking about it. Mm. This is hands down. Staffing, and specifically that, uh, that position, is nearly impossible to find. Uh, I have to say we have a great one right now, uh, and Jill and I are trying, even at this point in our career, we're trying some creative stuff, bringing in partners uh, to do deals, and, and uh, so it's a constant frustration. It's that, it's, that, uh, it's that position, that position, like if they're really, really good at it, they probably should be going and making a million bucks a year themselves doing mm -hmm. it. Uh, but then, but, so you have to find that personality that has that service-oriented mentality that's really good on the phone and has that that Jill uh, lust to get a deal done. Like, can't function without the deal getting done. I say, are they, and they don't want, they're really good at it, but they don't want to assume the risk on their own. So mm -hmm. they're happy helping you get your deals done. Um, and they have to be, I have a, I, there's a lot of transaction coordinators that didn't make the cut. I'll tell you, we've, we've talked about this before. And they get quickly overwhelmed. So it's really important to find someone that can get a deal, can get, you know, more than 25 deals done at the same time, and they're all at different points in the process, you know. So and that is a talent. So it you has to be super organized. It has nothing to do with uh, being a real estate agent. Most no. people think it's that that talent. Or it's contracts. Not. Yeah, it's not a lawyer. Mm -hmm. uh, what it is is, um, you know, it's it's half escrow agent so but if you're a really successful escrow agent see there's still really no responsibility for closing a deal if you're an escrow agent either right 
So you just have to find the right person. So your question is, can I, what your question is, can I find, do a, get, get a transaction coordinator halfway? Can I get it through a VA in the Philippines? Absolutely not. Can I, uh, you know, do I have to do it myself? Absolutely. Until I, you I can was hire my, full time. I, I would, until you can, you're going to spend a lot of time finding them, I think. And, and I think full time is the best. Here's how I solved it. I met Jill. And Jill was a natural transaction coordinator uh, to the point where she became a partner after like three weeks, three or four weeks of doing this with, with me. Well, it helps that we were sleeping together. <laughs> <laughs> that helps everything. <laughs> let's, let's go back. Let me back up, though. That's not how we met. He didn't hire me. So that, you know, like, oh, I see how you do it. Joe and I joined Here's forces. It. Let's this say is that. it. Could you imagine this is the whole? What? A, wait a minute. Did you trick me into this whole thing? <laughs> Wait, it's all coming full circle now. He's going to pretend to date me because yep. he sees how bright I am. Oh, and then put me into this role. It was all a ploy, Jill. That's it. I hate to break it to yeah, you. Yeah, and you've been just sleeping with me just to keep me interested. That's your, that's the carrot that you dangle. <laughs> the cat's out of the bag. Yeah. <laughs> so I never leave and do it for myself. <laughs> Cause I want to, I want to, I want a piece of this. <laughs> That's it. All right, got it. Wow, it only took me how many years to figure this out. So the answer to your question is, sleep with your transaction coordinator. Yes. See if she's any good. That's it. <laughs> oh my gosh! Wow. In fact, line up five of them, sleep with all of them, <gasps> see which one's the best. Oh my gosh, that's the one you hire. <laughs> Call a partner, doesn't matter. You're going to live with them anyway. Give them a title. Make them feel good. Give them a title. <laughs> Give them a title. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, that's awful. <laughs> Yeah, Charlie, that's not the way to do it. <laughs> the first thing you okay. ask, the first Woo. thing that you ask a transaction coordinator <laughs> is, how many deals have you done? Uh, and how many of the deals have you done last month? And they're going to say, it's going to be very easy for them to roll off their tongue. I did 42 deals last month, especially a, a, tra uh, a former escrow agent right. or like a broker assistant. And they'll bang their chest about it. Oh, I did 38 deals. I did 22 deals. And then the next question you ask is, have you ever prepared a deed and submitted it and gotten it recorded to yourself? And 98% of them are going to say, what are you talking about? You could do that? Yeah, I mean, I've never, what do you, you mean you submit a deed to the county? How does that work? Yeah. There's 2% of the people that you ask that question, they'll say, that's what we do every single time. What are you talking about? We, uh, oh, you mean Sally over at, at Maricopa County uh, Recorder? Yeah, she and I have lunch every Thursday. <laughs> now we're getting somewhere. Exactly. And it's hard to find that person because mm -hmm. usually they're off doing their own deals. Right. So. Or they're on their way to doing it. Mm -hmm. So believe me, I mean, it's we tough. probably had, I bet I've had in my career 25 transaction coordinators in-house and outsourced. Uh -huh. And, you know, they, it's, once you get one, you just got to keep them forever. Yeah. Yeah, we've kept them in other states and, mm -hmm. you know, made it really worthwhile um, to do it. I was going to say, too, the best thing you can do right now, too, Charlie, to prepare is... Get your process down the way you like it. Put some steps in place. Get a good CRM in place. So when you do find that right person, it's probably going to take you months. When you do find that right person, you can quickly hand it over. And you have something, you have something solid to hand them over. It took me I know. 15 years to find you. Thank you. So, And then now Jill's got an army of people. Right. Some of them are good and some of them are not good. Right. That's just how it is. It's true. Today's topic, five ways to finance deals. This is why you're listening. There are, in my opinion, five ways, you know, here's the deal. It all starts with finding a great deal, you know, specific, specifically in houses. There's so much more data available when you do a house mailer or when you bring a house deal comes back in and you assess it and you can see very literally, click around all the houses in the neighborhood or however you price it, you know, hopefully you're using smart pricing before the mailer goes out, you can see that, that what the house is worth mm -hmm. with very, 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 very predictable number. Mm -hmm. 
And so if you're buying the house for 50 or $80,000 less than what that number is, now you have something to talk about. And then you should look at these five different ways to finance deals and, and how much you're willing to give up and the risk and all of that. But it all starts with the deal. It doesn't start the other way around. And I think that that gets very confusing for people because for those of us who have gone to buy a house and bought it and lived in it as a primary residence, we do it the other way. We find the house, we like the curtains, your wife's happy, great, let's buy it. You know, it doesn't seem to be exorbitantly expensive, but it's always too expensive, always. You know, one of the two people involved in the relationship is going to say this is way too expensive. And the other person is going to say some version of, yeah, but I love it. And so everybody agrees to do the deal. It's that would be an emotional decision. The real estate over agent, a financial decision. Real estate agent gets successful, uh, gets excited because they didn't have to really work for their fee, and they're about to get a big check, and so they can buy more hairspray. So it's all moving forward, and uh, that's not how we do this here. What we do is we try to we buy on price. That's it. We buy on a super cheap, uh, you know, cheap price. It's a line. You got to see it like a line item. Right. So you got a great deal. What do you do? You can partnership with somebody. You can go like us. You could or anybody else in the group. Um, I'm buying a property for the property's worth two hundred thousand dollars. I have it under contract for one hundred and twenty. Um, if you give me, if you, my partner, provide the one hundred and twenty thousand dollars, I'll split the profit with you. It's pretty and good I'll do all the you. work. Yeah, that's partnership. We've done deals like that. Many deals. You can finance the property, we're all familiar with that, through debt. So you can go to whether, you know, Bank of America or you can go to like a hard money lender. They're gonna charge you a bunch of points up front. You're gonna secure more, you're gonna sign your life away, like get mortgage. Or in, a, in the case of private, uh, or in the case of uh, uh, hard money lending, you know, you really sign your life away. That's number two. Number three is self-funding, which is what we prefer to do. And, and at, it, that should be something at some point in your career you strive for. And it certainly wasn't like that in the beginning. We didn't self-fund everything in the beginning. Here's why. If you're only having a meeting with yourself and making decisions with yourself, it's gonna be really, really efficient and effective. And you take out all the work and the fees and all kinds of stuff. And you're generally happier. You know, it's a Warren Buffett quote. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Warren Buffett's famous for saying, I only ever go to meetings where there's one person. There we go. I was gonna say that's funny. <laughs> It'd be funny if you came out of that meeting pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that guy sucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the fourth way uh, is a syndication. So, and this is kind of what the what the fuel for this topic was. This twenty year old uh, year old kid found two great apartment building deals. Uh, probably the way that we do. I'm sure he didn't do it trolling the MLS. Sent out mail probably. Yeah. And then he spent six months doing exactly one thing which is finding money and finally he found one guy and that one guy did the rest of the work for him because he loved the deal he's done this is not the first deal he's done and so he raised the capital with his other uh money guys you know i'm gonna back up i'm just gonna throw in there on one one point if the deal's good enough all of these other things will happen so that's that's it thank and you and the fifth way <laughs> This is a mic drop. That was a short episode, Jill. <laughs> it's, that's all I have to say. Just kidding. The fifth way is, uh, and it's not what you expect, you can actually be the lender. And that sings to some people. That's what deal funding is for us. Not only do we want to do our own deals, and we do tons of them, we love to be your partner. Uh -huh. We love to be the lender on a lot of these deals. Not the lender from a debt standpoint, but a partner. Uh -huh. And so there are many, many people that started out there are a lot of them are in a group doing real estate deals and end up being a private equity lender. If that's for, it makes a lot of sense, I think. Everybody else is doing a lot of work. You can do 50 deals at once. If you have a source of capital, whether it's your own money, you've got partners, or you're, you've got a debt relationship somewhere, you can make lots of money doing very, very little work as I a lender. I find it funny that that's, that's the general mindset of our whole community. We're all... Um, we're almost fighting over deals a little bit. Everybody in our, it's seriously, the advanced group, if you really look around, they're they're throwing money out like whatever. They're, we're, we're all doing it. It's really, really good. There's no scared money in our group. Mm -hmm. Let's put it that way. Very true. Happy you could join us today. Every Tuesday and Thursday, we are here on the House Academy Show. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, you can find us over on the Land Academy Show. 
The episode on the Land Academy show tomorrow is called Focus on Being Great at One Part of Your Business. You are not alone in your real estate ambition. Oh, I'm curious what that's going to be about. What are you great at in this business? Oh my gosh. What aren't I great at? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I'm serious. What's one, what's the first thing that comes into your mind? Getting people to, getting people on to get stuff done, talking on the phone. Getting deals done. Yeah. Jill uh, doesn't know how to not complete a deal. Yeah. One of the worst things that can happen to Jill is she gets all the way down, everybody's agreeing to everything, and I pull the plug. And I say, you know yeah. what? I turn, I changed my mind on this. It's just the deal's just not good enough. That sends her to the moon. Oh, it does. And rightfully so, because her inner soul, she wants to get across the finish line. Yep. It, that also ties into my Friday show, but we'll talk about that. Mine is data. Yep. And, and putting these mailers together and pricing them correctly and choosing the right place. You're great at it. We'll talk more about that tomorrow. Yep. The House Academy show remains commercial free for you, our loyal listener. So wherever you're watching, wherever you're listening, please subscribe and rate us there. We, we are Stephen Jill. Information and inspiration to buy undervalued property.